Good evening, everybody. Welcome to BS Session 78. We got big cats, cool cats, tough cats, strange cats. You can swing a cat, you can skin a cat, but wild cats? We got them all. Let's go. But some of these bullets, as you saw, have an incendiary device on the tip of it, which is a heat seeking device. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Welcome to your weekly dose of BS, the Holistically Speaking Podcast. Bueno. That's all I got. How are you guys? Mm. 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 Let's keep mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be right. here. Yeah, Talk no about idea. wild cats. <laughs> we Holy got we got we got a semi wild really old cat. We got not a wild cat. <laughs> we got has two cats as roommates. And <laughs> I just didn't make a cat joke at all. <laughs> Are we actually delayed, Rooster, or are all of us just asleep right now? Your mouth goes, and then about two and a half seconds later, your your the voice comes, comes through at, at my. Oh, end. you got to be shitting me! You're no, good on I'm my not. end. Am I? Oh, is well, that right? I, I, it must just be Rooster's end. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Uh, everyone's good on my end. Okay. <laughs> I've always been God. a little delayed. I swear to God, we did a <laughs> we did a technical check before we went on the air, mm. but always a little bit behind. It always changes. When can't we can't make a home. silk purse out of a sow's ear. So I many can, have tried. I can totally do it. All right, what do we got today, fellas? Well, you take control. Did you come prepared? I take control. With yeah. notes. All right. Or do you want me to take control? I took some notes. Sure, you go right ahead. Just, I, got I got some. I got a few props, a few Ooh, tools. Show and tell. I like that. Yeah. Prepped a little bit. And some books that mm -hmm. I have to have somebody to read to me. <laughs> you guys are really ready for this conversation. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know sure. so. and everything. Well, let's get started by paying some bills then, and then let's actually get. Let's to, do that to the conversation. Well, let's let it start yes. out by letting everybody know that our show is brought to you tonight by EM Precision Rifles in Leduc, Alberta, building Canada's finest precision rifles, commissioned to build today at emprifles.ca. And we have Bolt Action Coffee. Sorry, Derek. Yeah, no <laughs> Bringing worries. specialty coffee to the precision shooting world. Order coffee and merchandise at boltactioncoffee.com. We're also brought to you by Call Sign 66. Canada's best rifle training. Welcome to the Brotherhood. Book a course now at callsign66.ca. And we don't want to forget Odell Engineering. Pick up a Canuck shotgun or Bergera rifle from your local distributor today and tell them Phil sent you. And Apex Optics. When you buy Apex, precision comes standard. Check out the, all the fine competition rifle scopes and binoculars and accessories at apexoptics.co. And you know, we didn't even mention the red dots, so check them out as well. Excellent. Uh, also, Ribstone Gunsmithing with us as always. Craftsmanship done right. Contact Oscar at ribstonegunsmithing.ca and breathe life back into any firearm. The Shooting Edge in Calgary, Alberta. Home of the Sterling Arms R18. Indoor range, training courses, a new six-lane axe throwing bay, and the one-shot, one-spill cafe. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, X, and their website at theshootingedge.com. And also Mark Scopes Canada. The Dion Optical Design line of rifle scopes has been a scope for all of your hunting and shooting needs. Find Doug and Niza at markscopes.ca. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, that's the first time ever that we've got through our ad reads within f the first five minutes of the show. But now it we won't might, forget. It might be. <laughs> now we have an extra couple of minutes for witty banter. Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah. And who's going to start that? Go. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what sound I need to add. So I see this guy at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we have uh, uh, the the background music, these little um, like like. Uh, oh, a wise like, guy, eh? Mm. Mm. You know that stuff. We we need a cricket sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like that'd be <laughs> yeah. a good used one. Uh, I do have a a little witty quip. Uh, we are talking about wildcats today. However, the Buick Wildcat will not be talked about today. <laughs> so you, you. You've been... I want to talk about the Buick Wildcat. <laughs> You're a classic car enthusiast. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not the episode for you. Don't you have to be over like 60 to own a Buick anyways? Just any Buick? Like they won't sell you one if you're younger than 60? You don't have to be, but it helps. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was a rule. It's like an unwritten rule. Like we won't sell you one. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure they changed that after COVID. No? This is where the cricket sound would have been <laughs> really good. I, I thought you had it queued up and Rob was just kind of giving you a moment to try it. Mm-hmm. No, I got to try and find it on the interwebs before I can upload it. Uh, we'll put it on the list. I'm going to add it right now. You guys uh, keep talking. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Funny I'll story, Jonathan myself. Bergen says uh, Rooster's Internet is ancient. So, <laughs> uh, we we just, well, we just tried uh, to switch to a different uh, provider uh, oh. to get away from Shaw. And um, so, did all the, did all the, uh, the formal stuff. And on Thursday, uh, they were supposed to come and install. Okay fine Mm -hmm. somewhere between eight and ten they said okay fine i stayed home just for that took my phone with me everywhere i went in the house didn't show up it's about noon noon 30 something like that gave a phone call oh no our tech phoned you and he showed up at the door and and knocked on the door and no one answered he phoned you and no one answered i'm like lady i know you can't do anything about this but he's fucking lying to you I can show you my call log and I was in the house and there was not a soul on my fucking doorstep. That's crazy. And get this, the next available appointment is May 4th, May 3rd. Mm -hmm. So you (laughs) still have Shaw now then? I do. Good sweet monkey. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. So does that make you want to still switch or no? <laughs> well, given the the quality of Shaw internet that I have right now, I'm willing to give it a shot. What's wrong with your Shaw internet? What's that? What's wrong with your Shaw internet? Well, you're delayed and garbled. I can barely hear what you're talking about, what you're saying. I guess that makes so, sense. Mm-hmm. That answers hey, that kinda, question. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my explanation. Huh, cool. Yeah. Who's going to start the conversation? Because I'm uploading awkward cricket sounds. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's start off. What is a wildcat cartridge anyways? Okay. That's right. You what start. constitutes a wildcat? Mm-hmm. Kind of easy, easy break it in, so... <laughs> What was that? That was the cricket noises. You, you missed it. Oh, oh, I did totally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, okay, what does constitute a wildcat then? Uh, any various wild well, felines of small to medium size, including the bobcat. <laughs> <or the> <laughs> okay, what constitutes a wildcat cartridge? Mm-hmm. I think we're kind of directing this one at Rooster since he's the he's the guy that's made a wildcat <laughs> cartridge. Okay, tell us, Rooster. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's it's like so many other things. Um, everybody has a different idea. Uh, a lot of a lot of people seem to think they change a shoulder angle or something minor, uh, neck a cartridge down, that it's a that it's a, a wildcat, and it. It it is in a sense. Um, I don't know what um, what detailed criteria to put on it, 
Um, mm-hmm. But you have to change a, a cartridge in a significant way. Um, my uh, my best example, I suppose, is my six five rooster cartridge. Um, I think it is a wildcat. I think it just probably barely meets that that criteria. But I took a 284 case and I shortened it uh, by 302 thou and necked it back down to uh, 6.5. So Mm. there's uh, the progression, I guess, starting over on this side here. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a a die made up, just kind of a convention, well, semi-conventional die. It had a series of bushings, uh, shoulder and neck bushings like this. Uh, that that you put in it, and it gives you each one of these sizes. So once once you get down to that, uh, mm. then you take and and cut it off, and there's a whole bunch of reaming and a whole bunch of neck turning that you have to do, and the fire forming and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's it's a ton of work um, for a little bit of gain, I guess. My 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 goal in the first place w- uh, with it was. Uh, back in real early 2017, um, there was still there was kind of at the height almost of the six five Creedmoor uh, thing that that uh, you know Isn't it was it the best thing since height? sliced bread. And I, what's that? Isn't it still at its height? Actually, no, 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 no. Uh, it's yeah, it's I, I six mil. Six mil is the game now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, carry on, <laughs> yeah. Rooster. Mm. So. I looked at that and I, I kind of giggled at the at uh, uh, all the fanfare and everything and and I mean it is a good cartridge I don't think anybody can really deny that but uh, that and I've said this to you guys probably numerous times before I have a, a fairly engorged fuck you center in my brain right next to my <laughs> amygdala that uh, that looked at that and went <laughs> fuck you I can make something better and I did. Mm. at a cost of (laughs) money and time and hair pulling and everything else. And I ended up getting about a hundred feet per second, um, over the, over the average Creedmoor, I guess, uh, like 147s the other day I was shooting at, uh, 29, uh, sorry, 2886 is what I averaged over, I don't know, 30 rounds or something like that, I think. So, Mm. It's moving, moving along pretty good. Uh, for, Could for you safely get now it moving faster? What's that? Could you safely get it moving faster, or is it pretty much topped out? Um, safely, I doubt I could go much higher than that. Um, it'll, it'll start to get into uh, real significant pressures after that, I'm sure. Okay. So you, you think about a load with uh with the 147s or at least personally i've i've loaded a 6.5 creedmoor with the 147s at uh 41 and a half grains of uh hodgdon 4350 uh getting somewhere around just into 2700 feet per second range somewhere there um this case will take uh safely uh 46 grains of 4350 yeah. so that that tells you the 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 volume difference. Um, so I don't know. It's to me, it's kind of a uh, kind of fun, kind of neat. Um, I, I'm an old machinist from way back, so I, I like fiddling around with this this type of stuff. Uh, and I I know what I'm doing with with uh, metals, I guess. Um, it's not for everybody. Uh, there's a lot of things you got to consider. A lot of things you got to uh, look out for. Um, choosing choosing a powder and a charge weight is a little bit dodgy. Mm. <laughs> and I have <laughs> I can't tell you how much data that I looked at. You know, you take similar case uh, volumes. Uh, in in the case of the six five rooster, it's just a little bit more. Uh, than my old 260 Ackley uh, used to take, I think. Uh, so this one runs uh, 48 grains of, of water. At 48. Oh, I can't remember. 
Uh-oh. I think that's what it was. Anyway. I smell something yes, burning. Yes, 40, 48 grains of water capacity. I think a, a 260 Ackley was 47. Um, 260 and 65 Creedmoor are only slightly different at 43 and 42 grains uh, of total water capacity. So, you know, I, I was looking into things like the 65 284, what kind of powder volume are they using for that? So you knock it down by X percent. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at similar stuff with modern uh, 6.5 by 55 Swedes uh, to get a kind of a ballpark um, idea of what I should be using. I tried uh, uh, 4831 shortcut and it actually does well. I got to revisit that again. Mm -hmm. uh, 4350 um, with 46 grains, the, the, the percentage of case fill is a little bit lower than what I'd like to see. Uh, but anyway, there's all sorts of that kind of stuff that a, that a guy has to consider when, when uh, designing a wildcat. Um, we have another one. Uh, Jens came up with a design, uh, took a 6 5 by 47 case and uh, basically acleized it, which means a, a 40 degree shoulder and, and you blow some of the body taper out of the case. And we necked it to 25. So it, it's essentially a, a 25 by 47 improved. And we get just a, just a hair over 2,900 feet per second with a 135 grain bullet. And it's so, can you, can you really call that uh, a Wildcat cartridge? Because all we did mm. was we necked it down, um, put a 40 degree shoulder on it, and took a slight amount of case taper out. So is that a Wildcat? I don't know. And I think there's been a, been a lot of discussion over uh, uh, Parker Ackley. Is it Parker? P.O. Ackley, anyway. The old guy that put a 40 degree shoulder on seemingly everything. Um, is it really wildcatting? I just happen to have his book. According mm. to him, it is. Uh, there's lots of, lots of people that, that argue that all you're doing is, is uh, putting a different shoulder angle on it. Is it really wildcatting? I don't know. What do you guys think? What? I think there's that, uh, I think improving and wildcatting, you might be able to separate in, in a certain sense, like obviously just changing the shoulder, th a single single variable change sounds yeah. like I an improvement. I think I honestly. I think mm -hmm. a couple, if you're doing a couple variable changes, I think that's where it comes into wildcatting. Like if you're changing a shoulder angle and necking up, necking down, I feel like that probably warrants the wildcat name, in my opinion. My humble, not so expert yeah. opinion. <clears throat> more more than two significant changes to a cartridge in that, any that's, that's the new definition more than two changes mm -hmm. <laughs> that would work because anybody so can do at, one <laughs> at, at, at one time when i didn't have a whole bunch of money to burn i uh i had that 260 ackley built but i couldn't find any any uh, uh cases at the two, 260 cases at the time Mm -hmm. I just happened to have a bunch of 308 cases laying around. Now, 308's uh, a fair bit shorter, and and I'm only talking what is it, thirty thou or something like that, shorter than uh, than a 260. So it'll do. Um, so I necked it down, and it turns out when you neck it down, um, you thicken up the the neck. So then I had mm -hmm. to neck turn everything, and then you fire form it. Um, blew the blew the the well blew the whole case out to the the chamber dimensions of the 260 ackley um is that wildcatting isn't that just I making think it's your off own brass it. it's not <laughs> <laughs> well right i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's the thing I, I it's it's a strange world you know the crossover between guns and machining and metallurgy and like the whole thing just seems like for for me like I, i'm not a machinist i don't know metals i i barely know how to hold a gun um mm. and when we have these conversations i just keep thinking like who cares 
like, if, if you want to call that's it, what, a, that's how most people are. I know, right? Like, if you want to call it a wildcat, it's a wildcat. If you want to mm-hmm. call it an improved, uh, it seems to me like general. Correct me if I'm wrong. Generally speaking, calling something a wildcat cartridge has just become like a general term for a non-commercialized cartridge. And then if a wildcat becomes really yeah. popular, it might be commercialized. So like. I, I guess you could say that a wildcat is not necessarily commercialized, but it can be. But really, it's I mean, just taking I mean, one cartridge and making a different cartridge out of it. This is this is true. Well, take, Essentially, that's ninety percent of, of wildcats. Isn't that Weatherby's like ninety percent of their shtick? Is we just keep making our own new cartridges? They just keep wildcatting. Yeah, yeah. commercially. <laughs> yeah. Whether right. we wildcats. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I honestly think so. I, I don't see much of a difference. And if we talk about like, uh, you know, uh, you, you were saying earlier, Derek, like um, you would put improved and wildcatting in two different categories. Mm-hmm. I, I could, I could, com- I could understand that if you were taking one cartridge, putting a, a that 40 degree shoulder on it, and keeping it the same otherwise. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Would that be because mm-hmm. you're kind of that's kind of what you were talking about before rooster. So is that wildcatting or is it just improving? But if you take that just that case and then you put a 40 degree shoulder on it, but then you put a different diameter bullet in it and you neck it down also. That's where Mike, get, what Mike was talking about, where you make two or right. more changes. Now you're wildcatting. Right. Yeah, or, or, or third option. Well, who the hell knows? Oh, Mike's third. <laughs> if you're option. manufacturing your own brass, just like I'm going to take a sheet of brass and just punch, punch, punch. Here's my cartridge. Is that wildcatting? I mm-hmm. think that is making a novel cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, you have lots of money if you can do that. Yeah, no yes. doubt, right? Yeah, I'd like you to start making my ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you. <laughs> Putting a wrap on my Prius isn't making it a race car. Well, mm. if you take the electric engine out and, and you put like a Tesla engine in there, it might actually be making it a race car. And put I a 40-degree shoulder on it. And put a 40-degree <laughs> shoulder. But that's kind of the point, though, too, isn't it, right? Like like taking a taking a, a Honda Civic and putting a Canadian tire muffler on it does not make uh, a street racer. But taking a Honda Civic no. and putting you know, uh, 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 a race engine in it uh, with nitrous and uh, a fancy wrap and uh, calling yourself uh, uh, Vin Diesel, that does make it a race car. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't know where the calling yourself Vin Diesel came in, but uh, I'm intrigued. We share share a hairline and I really Mm. liked him in uh, in pitch black. So Mm -hmm. And an arm size. Incomes are probably similar. Mm-hmm. I think he might have me beat on the bicep side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm taller though, so it evens out. So I think we should talk about the purpose of wildcatting. Like, like Kurt obviously was talking about how he basically made a wild cart catch cart uh, wild. Yeah, mixing up my words here. We're wildcat cartridge. Take it easy. In order as a little bit of a fuck you to the six five Creedmoor. Yeah. But I feel like there's also some wild cart cartridges that are done to fill a niche or a role. So I think there's yeah. a kind of couple categories. There's the one because I can, and the other side of it because I want something different. Right. There's three. There's three mm. because I can, mm-hmm. because I want something different, and because fuck you, that's why. And that's mm-hmm. where rooster sits. <laughs> right. Very important. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> Slight distinction one. to the first one, but a very important mm. distinction at the same time. <laughs> okay. So what? What? Because I can and. Uh, because I want something different or because yes. because it fits a purpose. Because you could want something. Mm. Curtis, Kurt, Curtis, Kurt wanted something to say fuck you. Like he, he wanted something different so mm. that he could say fuck you Creedmoor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it didn't really fill a purpose. Not really. Yeah, I it done filled the, the same purpose. Same thing with... Right. Mm-hmm. I could have built another 260 Ackley and done the same damn thing, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and and when I when I designed this thing, 
um, the 6.5 PRC hadn't come out yet. <laughs> and mm-hmm. and you know what? It checked all the same boxes except for uh, bolt face diameter. Mm-hmm. And the name. The so, name is no good. And a little bit yeah, less sure. cart, a little less powder capacity. Yep. I would say yep, too. Because sure. I'm actually loading yep. six five PRC now. So I was, was listening and I'm like, that's that's very close to the PRC. <laughs> now, so. now that ammo for the PRC actually exists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, hmm. that's an example of one that became popular enough that it's commercialized now, right? Yeah. So I think there's better examples if if we think back to like the '60s and that. I think that's that's when that was when um, back the when the age. 222 used to be benchrest king, right? Uh, and then the six PPC came along. There's two two doctors. Uh, somewhere that that developed this cartridge uh, took the 220 Russian case and and modified it a little bit and necked it down to six mil. Was it six? I think so. Was the six the six was the first one, and they started winning benchrest competitions like crazy. Um, and then from that, um, somebody I don't know if those it was those same two guys. Uh, but they just took the same case, necked it down to 22, so they could compete um, in a different class of, of bench rest. So that actually filled uh, both of those cartridges, as far as I'm concerned, actually filled uh, a void. I think mm-hmm. so. Somebody the 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 222 Remington uh, was the king of of uh, short range bench rest at the time. Uh, somebody needed to to come up with a better mouse trap to to defeat that, so that was the six, and then then it evolved into the twenty two PPC. So to to me, and I might be showing my age a little bit, but that's <laughs> uh, when I when I first started getting interested in in all this kind of stuff. I read a lot of that stuff way back in early nineties, I guess, or late eighties or something. So, mm. but there's a there was a void there that, that they filled. Now, um, take something like the GT. And I don't know if you've ever uh, read any articles about it or heard George Gardner talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that bending. Um, what did he say there? 6GT oh, and 6-Dasher yeah. are commercialized too, Oops, but sorry. still a wildcat. I don't think it'll be a wildcat for very long. It's getting very, very popular. Well, so when does a wildcat mm-hmm. not become a wildcat any longer? Well, I think when it adopts, or when when Sammy, uh, what is it, the shooting when it becomes arms Sammy's and shooting ammunition arms manufacturing association something. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, for okay. example, then the six five um, Grendel would no longer be considered a wildcat cartridge because it's been Sammy spec'd. Yeah, no. It was there's... originally a wildcat, but uh, yes, it is. I believe it's on the Sammy list. Yeah. So is that really our two categories? Then we have wildcats and we have Sammy. Are we going to have to add that to our wildcat definition? You make two uh, or would... more changes to an existing cartridge, and it has not been adopted in Sammy specs. Yes, I would say that's. Yes. Uh, I think we're getting to a good definition here now. Oh, As a fair... getting somewhere. <laughs> I think we are actually making progress. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so one uh, thing. Oh, oh. Sorry, I was just saying. Bending says GT is Sammy spec, same with Dasher. Yeah. I guess we already knew that, though, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Or you guys did. I didn't. Mm-hmm. So, so I think. Yeah, uh, you prob- know what? I. Go ahead, Go ahead Rooster. I, I think that's one of the biggest criteria. Um, really but 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 that goes along with uh if it's not a factory offering then it could very well be a a wildcat so you won't see a factory offering uh without uh sammy adoption uh or certification whatever however the hell it goes mm. um mm-hmm. like you 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 take something like uh and this one's a bit unique the 280 remington uh, for decades, guys have been acclimatizing them, uh, and it's it is an excellent cartridge. The the the, the conventional 280 is an excellent cartridge, 
uh, I think they just made it a little bit better by uh, um, going to an Ackley design. Can now, I sidetrack us um, just for a quick second? Sure. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be cool? It's, if it, somebody... Now, let me say it's been adopted into into Sammy now, so it's. I think it's so, the okay. only Ackley cartridge. Okay, Chris, go. <laughs> okay, wouldn't wouldn't it be cool if we were important enough that somebody would turn our name into a verb? Say that again. Well, you said mm-hmm. they were Ackleyizing cartridges. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if somebody would turn our names into verbs? <laughs> yeah. Be different. You mean like, 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 like taking a popular <laughs> cartridge that, that mm-hmm. people like and making a wildcat just to say, fuck you, could be called roosterating. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Saskatchewan version of wildcat. These parts have a different, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like coyote hunting. Mm-hmm. The local watering hole. <laughs> yeah. Derek, you were going to say something a couple minutes ago, and then... Uh... Uh, yeah, I was going to come in. Uh, so I think the biggest thing, uh, obviously, the most intimidating thing well, the Wildcat is, like, you can have an idea, you can have existing dies, but that chamber reamer, what process is that like? Calling up somebody and, like, hey, I need you to make this custom thing that's going to hold a tiny explosion right next to my face. At tens <laughs> of thousands of pounds per square inch mm-hmm. of pressure. Right. You know what, reamer, uh, reamer manufacturers are pretty much, I think, the same as any other manufacturer. No matter how stupid the idea, if you're willing to pay for it, and he can build <laughs> it, he'll build it. He doesn't give a shit what you do with it after. You could use it as a fucking doorstop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody doesn't makes know. you sign like uh, anything saying that I... I understand that I'm using this with explosives and I may be a complete absolute dipshit and I can't be sued. Like there's no like hold harmless clause or anything that they make you sign or. I, I don't remember now. Uh, I might've gotten that. uh, I didn't read it. I just signed it. (laughs) Signed it. Letter buck. (laughs) But I had a real interesting talk with, uh, um, Oh, what's his name? Manson. Anyways. Uh, not Charles, um, and uh, you know it, it was it was nice to talk to him because he, well he said you have no idea the amount of ridiculous requests I get, and so with with the dimensions that I have from wildcatters uh, or in, up, in general. Uh, well, I'm I'm assuming <laughs> wildcatters or okay. or you know those guys just like what we encountered at the Saskatoon gun show there. Uh, several weeks ago that, uh, yeah, I got, uh, I was able to custom spec every dimension yeah. in my 300 wa- wind mag, uh, yeah. chamber. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. So, you know, you take a conventional, like a Sammy, uh, uh, drawing and you change most dimensions by a couple of thou or some stupid thing. Bravo. It's yours. But- but I don't think that's even what that guy was talking about. I think that guy was literally just talking about like, I, I put a micrometer on it and drew it out, even though I could have bought a book that already had that done. <laughs> could be, you, know? you never know. People get silly with some of these things. So, yeah. But, uh, the, the one mistake that I did, well, two mistakes, uh, that I allowed to happen when I talked to, uh, Manson about it. One was that, he uh, told me that I should run with a 299 neck uh, for the for the chamber, so 299 thou. So at the time, uh, I had a 260 and a 260 Ackley before this, and both of them were 296. And uh, so I mentioned this to him, and I said I would rather go that way. I can al- always turn... Uh, a little bit smaller uh, to get the case to fit the way I like in the neck area. Um, and he was he was very insistent that I should go with a 299 neck. Um, that'll that'll help reduce some pressures and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I did. But now, um, with the way I have uh, all my necks turned and everything, it's um, uh, it's basically a I think it's an eight or nine thou difference between uh a sized 
case with a bullet in it mm. and my my neck dimension in my in my chamber so uh, that's a lot that's one thing <laughs> i would change mm. uh, the other thing i would i would i think i would change is um and and he he kind of warned me about it uh he says it's very very typical almost always uh, you know, when a, like you take a 308 case and, and they tell you max case length is, uh, uh, what is it, 2.005, or is that the trim length? Anyway, let's use 2.005 as maximum uh, chamber length. Mm. What reamer manufacturers will do is they'll add another 15 thou onto that so that it's safe for the guys that don't pay attention to their brass length so this mm. is what he did with mine and i designed the case uh to be 1.940 inches long and i have a 1.955 uh inch long uh chamber so now i've got a, a at it's least totally a 15 or 20 thou gap say that again it's totally your sex tape I have a 1.995 inch <laughs> Come get it, ladies. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, um, yeah, it's it's interesting talking to guys like that because they they have uh, they get so many requests and and there's a lot of people that that don't uh, that that they want to do things but they really don't know what the hell they're doing to achieve mm. those things. So, it's a story of my life. I think everybody should talk to a, a gun manufacturer or somebody that that makes ammo or something, um, because we all kind of just take it for granted, right? Oh, this gun takes this ammunition, and away you go. There's a couple of things here in the chat I think we should uh, address. First of all, uh, Christian D says the pressure babies handicap most hot rods. Uh, Christian, I yes. want you to elaborate on that because I, I want to know what you're talking about. Do you guys think? <laughs> You know what he's I don't know about? what I don't want to know what he's talking about. I actually really do. <laughs> <laughs> while while we're waiting for him to elaborate on mm. that, uh, Don Miller said, if the cartridge requires a new chamber reamer that has not been done before, then it's a wildcat. Now, yep. correct me if I'm wrong, though. Like, if you if you're if you're like most of the changes that you're going to be making on the cartridge, it's going to require a new chamber reamer, isn't it? Yeah. Well, okay. It should. Like, even if you just, like, <laughs> take the same cartridge and put a 40-degree shoulder on it, you probably should get a new chamber reamer, shouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, if you put a 40-degree shoulder on a cartridge and then put it in a conventional chamber... It's well, just going to blow it out to that angle. You could try. The... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, you're right. Or it just won't even... Uh, uh, it won't uh, seat the cartridge properly. Right, right. <laughs> You can squish it in there. I like this one here. <laughs> Just as a general statement. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel uh, that some days. Title of Scott's sex tape. Uh, so, Christian, here's here's Christian uh, elaborating on his uh, his comment here. So, for example, 500 Smith and Wesson was sent in a 75,000 to 80,000 pressure psi cup hmm. sammy kept the sixty-five thousand psi cap in place even though the brass was fine what do you guys think of that your results may vary <laughs> <laughs> okay but what well, is that's... the non-lawyer response to that <laughs> that's that's a dumb fucker factor is really what does that mean is. Okay, so Guy, so if you everybody keeps talking tell, like I'm supposed to be able to infer from what you're saying, treat me like an idiot because <laughs> I think your title says it all says um, tr tr trigger makes smoke exactly <laughs> too much sound exactly. So treat me like an idiot, and then and then, and then explain what you were saying again. <laughs> Because uh, I don't know if you watched it recently, but uh, Ultimate Loader Gavin, they had that 308, and they were pushing up to like 300 wind mag levels. Right. right. Yeah. But that was with very, very good brass, and they were very, very careful about it. 
but say someone who's going to, I'm going to go wildcat something with a lathe I bought at Princess Auto may not be using the most quality of materials. <laughs> Fair point. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that the, the likelihood is that, you know, companies like Smith & Wesson, for example, are adding a buffer specifically into their cartridges for people, well, like me, if I decided to start, try wildcatting. Mm-hmm. Uh, tolerance essentially to, essentially to cover themselves because they know unfortunately uh the majority of people are uh not the smartest at times and with small explosions against their face it's uh it's it's best to have a larger safety factor than a smaller safety factor it's like my 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 dodge minivan <laughs> is rated to tow five thousand pounds <laughs> but it could tow ten thousand pounds Right. Yeah, for a that's certain exactly, amount of time. That's probably right. <laughs> probably one of the best analogies. Yeah. And I and might also... be able to get away with it in perpetuity. I also might not, mm-hmm. is what you're saying. <laughs> you're also probably not very good at stopping that 10,000 pounds either. I could do it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll worry about that later. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's a difference between liability and actual, call it, uh, barriers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pressure's, uh, uh, pressure's a, a bit of a bastard. I, I've noticed uh, there, there's a couple of things. Um, like with uh, very straight walled cases, uh, like the Ackley uh, designs, they're harder to tell um, when when you get up past. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I Kathy. missed that comment. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the nerd off is in He's not wrong. Propeller spinning fast. There, I said it for you, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that and I had to highlight it. Carry on. <laughs> um, where the hell was I? Okay, uh, straight walled cases uh, or very little taper. <laughs> It's harder to tell when you get to pressure. Now, a lot of guys still uh, uh, go by the primer. Is the primer flat? Well, if it's not flat, pour some more gas on it. Mm. Not very reliable. Uh, it, it, it used to be conventional belief, widespread conventional belief. You look at your primers to, to see whether or not you're over pressure. Mm-hmm. It's not reliable. There's different, uh, different cups. Uh, thicknesses and and uh, hardnesses um, <clears throat> and it doesn't when, when you get a flattened primer you also have to have some bolt thrust but if that if that case is grabbing the the uh, chamber like it should and not not sliding back or or pushing the the the, the head of the case at least back hard against your bolt you're not necessarily going to get um, that that flattened primer now the other thing too is if you have excess uh cartridge head space like if you if you've sized your brass uh small enough that there's a little bit of slop in there and i'm only talking mm-hmm. you know, 10 12 14 thou, something like that um what will happen is is that 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 case will move forward when the when the firing pin strikes it okay and then pressure will like the the primer will ignite pressure will build and it'll slam that that case back against the 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 face of the bolt but it's got some room and sometimes that primer will actually back out of uh you you typically flush with the the rim of the case right uh when you when you extract that that case but sometimes they'll kind of pop out so that they end up being proud of that that face that's a good indication of excess cartridge headspace and there's a good chance that if that if that that primer reseats it'll flatten out so your your short case in that chamber may not have wild pressure but your primer will show flat and you think well fuck i'm only getting 2500 feet per second out of this thing what's wrong I'm getting mm-hmm. over pressure. It's not necessarily the case. Holy fuck. I oh, I, I know. I blow minds all the time. <laughs> I, I just had an apostrophe. Lightning. <laughs> it struck my brain. Okay. Check this out. 
Uh, I know this, where you're going. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm asking. I'm asking for a friend. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, let's say you've got a a, a novice reloader. Uh, let's say he's um, about six, six and a half seven. feet tall, uh, <laughs> bald, blue eyed. Uh, let's say, mm. just for sake of argument, his name is Schmriss. Okay. Mm. Um, and Boy, he, dirty old <laughs> he, he uh, originally had one 308 rifle mm-hmm. and he started trimming all of his brass for that 308 rifle. And then he bought another 308 rifle. Let's say the first one was like a, I don't know, like a, a, a Remington 700 or something. And then the second one was like, I don't know, like a, a, a Sig Cross. Okay. Mm. And he like, a well, because it was within the accepted limits, he just kept trimming his 308 brass to the same length. He's always trimmed his 308 brass since he only had the one 308, but he started shooting it exclusively in the new 308. Then he decided to have the genius. I'm having trouble keeping up already. No, no, you're with me. <laughs> don't, don't fuck around here. We're hanging in here. <laughs> okay. Honest to you, strength. Do, do, I, do I need to draw a diagram? <laughs> okay. So then he has the genius idea. He says, hey, you know what would be kind of fun? Hunting with a, a 300 caliber bullet, usually reserved, Chris M., usually <laughs> reserved for 300 Win Mag. But I want to put that bullet in a 308. And so now you've got, say, like a uh, uh, 200 uh, grain projectile loaded into a 308, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is obviously, you know, if you have to push a larger mass, that's going to increase pressures. Correct. Correct. To what extent? Yeah. I mean, well, obviously, yeah. is is a, is a variable, but yeah. it, it would increase. It is one variable. Larger projectile, <laughs> just uh, what uh, little I know about physics, you know, to make that that larger mass move, it's going to create larger pressures um, before it moves it. So, <laughs> the bullet is moving slower, but it still creates larger pressures to get it going. And you're doing it with brass that is trimmed for a different rifle but let's say that the second rifle has just a little bit more headspace on it okay so you're 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 getting a little bit mixed up there chris okay the trimming doesn't necessarily have anything to do with with uh what, what oh right because the shoulder's still going to be the same it's the sizing mm-hmm. yeah ah yeah. son of so, a bitch bag now i thought trimming I was something. can create its own problems wasted, as well i just wasted mm-hmm. five minutes of everybody's time. <laughs> it was it was a I, man, okay. I was captivated. I really was. <laughs> it's not the substance of the story. It's how you tell it. <laughs> Fuck, I really thought I was but awesome. The, Where's Cappy? Cappy, say something funny and, and like, help me <laughs> take, this, take this pressure off of me. <laughs> we need to get team hats with propellers. Mm. <laughs> but, okay, now, if you're, Yeah. So I think my problem is still what my problem always was. I'm just rammy with the with the uh, resizing die. Yeah, if your if your full length size is, well, let's say that the chamber was shorter on the original rifle, and you mm-hmm. full length size with just a little bit less, like a lot of guys will bump the shoulder two thou is kind of conventional wisdom. Mm-hmm. But if your new chamber is longer, and you're still bumping that shoulder back, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you could have like six or eight valve expansion upon firing. And that's an absorbing kind of feature yeah. is that brass taking up that, that space that on the old rifle was two thou, the new rifle six thou. So hmm. that's also a variable right. that could come into there. And all of a sudden, is that a wildcat? Cause you bump the shoulder a little too far. <laughs> yep. No, <laughs> no. Damn. That so could be an is, improved uh, or I unimproved improved cartridge. <laughs> yeah. Not, not always a, improving. It could be unimproving. I made the 308 Chris M unimproved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> unimproved. Hey, I got my own cartridge. Whatever. Yeah. Win's a win. 
So Christian says, yeah, you need so, a new sizing die for each rifle. Right. So, uh, I mean, if you want to go that way, fine and dandy. So say you have two 308s. Great. Um, one has a cartridge head space, or a, let's say a chamber head space of, I don't know what the hell, uh, one point, let's say 1.9 for easy figuring. Mm -hmm. The other rifle has a head space of uh, 1.9. 905 908 let's say mm -hmm. okay so you decide that okay i know this i've measured it set up my my sizing die so that it's two thou short of that 1.900 so it'll chamber in the shortest chamber of the two rifles but use that brass in the other rifle with the one point nine zero five or nine zero eight chamber mm -hmm. um and it's going to stretch a lot more so what you'll see out of the brass that you use in that rifle with the longer chamber mm -hmm. you'll see more often than not decreased case life from that working back and forth that that stretching to fit that chamber that sizing back to uh you know ten thousand smaller uh, just so it, it will fit in your shorter chambered rifle. Which could lead to case okay. separations. It it certainly could. You betcha. Theoretically. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, in a hypothetical You know, and if, if, if you wanted to go that way to buy a set of dies and set it up specifically for each rifle, pfft, yeah. have at her. Um, yeah. you, you can get away, but the, as I could with also everything, just... there's no free lunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I could also just stop doing stupid things like putting 200 grain bullets in a 308. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's not let's, stupid. You let's know what? take F class let's, guys do it all the time with mm -hmm. the 220x burger. I got an even. I got an even better one for you, Chris. Okay. Let's take a 208, a 200 grain, 30 caliber bullet, and yeah. let's put it in a 223 case, and that is a <laughs> 300 blackout. That, well, you're right about that, mm -hmm. but um, they did it smarter, smart, smartly, smarter, smarter, <laughs> smarter more, like smarter, more smarter. smarter. Mm -hmm. They did it with a defense contract in mind. Yeah, they did mm -hmm. it more big brain. <laughs> and th yeah. they yeah, also, so. um, they also completely like they com made a completely new cartridge. They actually wildcatted a cartridge. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, because they had, they had three steps, so they I they shortened projectile, in. and then they neck down, and then obviously the shoulder length was shoulder size and it was completely different. Yeah, so definitely totally different cartridge. Mm -hmm. Now, and now now you get a bunch of guys throwing two twenty three cases or cartridges into a three hundred blackout. Isn't that some of the things that's been going on? Yeah. So they're doing what? Yeah, you can you can convert a regular two two three case, so you can make your own three hundred blackout brass out of a spent two two three cases. Yeah. Okay. You just you, can... you just cut the brass, and then you can just use a three hundred regular three hundred blackout die yeah. and size it, and you're good to go. So if you have a plethora of range brass, two two three five five six. Yeah. You also have the option to make your own three hundred blackout brass relatively easily. Let's talk about that for a second, because mm -hmm. we were um, in our in our chat. We were talking a little bit about three hundred and eight six, mm -hmm. and then like the two blackout cartridges. And I love the idea of both of them. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but I really like the idea of of throwing um, larger projectiles at slower speeds. Maybe I should buy myself a thirty thirty. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> But, I actually uh, have the cartridge just for you. I did it this in my research. Okay. Um, so I'll uh, I'll actually show my my screen. I'm waiting here. for someone to put a 50 caliber in a 308 cartridge. That's what I'm waiting for. Let's see. Where is rooster. it? Am I showing my screen? Rooster. No. The 50 rooster. Hold on. I need a 50 caliber projectile in a it, 308. It doesn't fit. <laughs> you could do it. No. I believe. <laughs> I okay. believe you could do it. <laughs> John calls it the okay, 50 so... fuck you. <laughs> <John Burton. laughs> yep. Well, so I'm gonna... he says 338 Lapua goes with the 50. What, what's he saying? 
50 blackout is a 338. I didn't know there was a oh. 50 blackout. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we got to do the 8.6 rooster for sure. Yes. If they're doing that, 50 blackout. When, when did 50 blackout yeah. come in onto the scene? I don't know. This is the first I've heard of it. That's that's kind of awesome, actually. I also okay, want to direct you guys to another uh, cartridge that's very much so the same. Okay. It is the 416 Spike. <laughs> and I want you to Google an image of the 416 Spike. 416 Spike. So essentially what it is, is it's a 308 cartridge essentially just cut off so it's now a straight wall cartridge and it has a 300 some odd Whoa. grain if you go to the one of the top uh, <laughs> top left at the very top yeah we're there so there is the 416 spike and i don't know what it is about it but i'm in love oh i got stars in my eyes isn't that that's neat? ugly as shit it doesn't so, even have a shoulder it doesn't have a 40 degree shoulder on it it's not a real wild cat <laughs> <laughs> okay but hold on hold on one moment here what is the parent mm. cartridge for this the 308 the 308 yes the 416 spikes parent cartridge is 308 they just cut it off and straight walled it essentially yes and put sorry what mm. projectile is in there a 416, obviously. 416, and it's about, uh, they can do like 400, 300 to 400 grain projectiles. I was reading on an article here, allegedly, so guys, guys, uh, it's a company called Spike uh, Spike Tactical out of the United States. Okay. And um, they, ha they have it set up in an Air 10, and allegedly uh, they're getting 1050 as a muzzle velocity, so it's subsonic. <laughs> But allegedly, because of the weight, this projectile they're using was a 400 grain projectile. Allegedly, it's got such carrying capacity and still a good enough BC. Allegedly, at 1,000 yards, it's still doing 860 feet per oh, second. Oh, come on now. Allegedly. I had to envision uh, uh. Like just throwing a 44-ounce ball-peen hammer would be about the same thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, you got a better shoulders than I got. So, <laughs> so a guy said, could a guy could make this rather relatively easily too, because he's just cutting 308, and the guy said to use a Ford 16 Rigby neck die in order to basically crimp the case ever so a little bit in yeah. order to hold the bullet. Hmm. So then, uh, what's it head spacing off of then? Nothing. <laughs> It's got to be the case mouth, because mm. there is no other, or yeah, unless they're just relying probably... completely on taper. So are you just it relying seems, on looks the like bolt there's a lot of tape grabbing the case to not blow the? Like, what are we doing here? No, no, you can't. We're wildcatting. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> if it's the same type of thing as a pistol, like a rimless pistol cartridge that, that head spaces on the mouth of the case. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, it's, like essentially that, that should work. Wow. So it's Mikey a, says, uh, idea, sorry, not not a 500 blackout, a, five, a 50 whisper. I think he might have meant a 510 whisper. Oh, that's what whisper. I got when I, oh. when I did a search for 50 whisper. Uh, so what <laughs> that is. So a subsonic. I can't cartridge. remember the name of the. Yeah. Yeah, so it fires a 51 caliber bullet weighing 750 grains at 1,050 feet per second. See, this sounds awesome. And it's it's a 50 caliber in a 338 Lapua case. Hmm. I, I, I could do you one better. <clears throat> yes, do, please. <laughs> so in, in uh, our, our good old P.O. Ackley in the 1960s, uh, a guy from Guns and Ammo asked him if we could create the uh, cartridge that could get 5,000 feet per second, and he gave us the 22 ear gesplitten Loudon Boomer. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously, ear gesplitten Loudon Boomer. Yeah, ear and, and what is that? It looks like it's a 378 Weatherby case to a 40 degree shoulder, of course, as is tradition. Yeah. And it, we got a 50 grain <laughs> bullet going 
4,600 feet per second. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take a look at this, guys. Can you see the screen? Does it, does it pop up? Yeah, we can, we can see your screen. Uh, the images are a little bit small. Is that still, the whole but... suite of the oh, Whisper Towers? Yeah. Uh, I think we can uh, <clears throat> we can do that. Can, well, yeah. we can make it even bigger here. Uh, no, I can't. Okay. So, yeah, this we've got 300 Whisper, which doesn't look that much different. Oh, it's it's maybe it's in a 762 by 37. I don't know. 300 Whisper is 300 Blackout. It is. Essentially. Blackout. Yeah. Okay. It was the, kind of the Wildcat predecessor before Sammy approved the 300 Blackout. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, here's what I'm looking at here. Look at the 510 Whisper. It basically looks like that 417... A watch him a bike that's it yeah but it has ever so little bit of a shoulder on it mm -hmm. so there you go and it's in a 338 parent case instead of putting uh, a 417 in a 308 parent case mm -hmm. right so that should be much more loud and boomer <laughs> okay mike tell us more uh... about the loud and boomer well, the loud and boomer, it's, I, I, I kind of lightly got to it. Yeah. P.O. Ackley just tried to make something that would go as fast as stupidly humanly possible. 50 grain bullet, 105 grains of H570 powder <laughs> with a twist rate of 10 was getting 4,600 feet per second, allegedly. 46? 4,600 feet per second. And how many rounds before hmm. he has to rebarrel? Uh, I think just one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, have, we're doing like titanium lined barrels now. Mm -hmm. I think that's the future of wildcatting. If you want to go, to go faster, it's depleted uranium at 6,000. <laughs> or, or liquid cooling. Yeah, yeah liquid cool. You yeah, know, it's kind of sounds great. Kind of funny you, you talked about that. I remember, what was it? The. the the cheetah um, was a it was a twenty two cheetah, I think. I, or there was another case off the uh, two forty three Winchester case that they uh, wildcat had meddled around with, improved. Um, and there were guys I re I remember reading about. Oh my God, this is probably twenty years ago now. That that case the 243 winchester improved and neck to 22 they were taking hmm what was it 35 or 40 grain bullets and getting almost 5,000 feet per second out of them and like you say though there's no again there's no free lunch mm -hmm. barrel life is like you wouldn't get through load development hardly <laughs> Um, I, so there's a comment here from bending. He says the 416 spikes tactical round was an April fool's joke four years ago, but is it an actual cartridge or is it not? I don't see it why is. it wouldn't I, fire I got the article right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so uh... it, it is an actual cartridge. Some yep. of, yeah, uh, the firearm blog, what I'm looking at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 where does it say? Yeah, that, that article, they posted it in March 25th of 2018. So that's before mm -hmm. April Fool's. Hmm. It was it not posted April on April Fool's. That went somewhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look at Meg pulling their wall flyer in a couple of years ago. Everyone's like, I want that now. Mm -hmm. And they still haven't done it. <laughs> I would have bought one. Hmm. So I have this fancy little book here, Cartridges of the World. I don't know, some of you uh, out there may also have the same thing. It has a whole chapter on Wildcat cartridges. Mm -hmm. And there are a gob. Um, hmm. So one of the things uh, it says here is... Um, a great proliferation of wildcat cartridge designs has occurred in the past 20 years or so. I don't know how old this book is now, but 
Um, some of those quite good and some not so good. In some instances, the Wildcat filled or was perceived to fill uh, some niche not accommodated by commercially available ammunition. Good examples include the 35 Whalen and the 458 Alaskan. Uh, the 35 Whalen, I know, is a 36 case uh, necked up to, to 35 and a little bit of different shoulder, I think. Uh, the 458 Alaskan, I'm not sure, but I think that's a 338 Win Mag necked up to uh, 458. Hmm. Um, anyway, so it, they don't give a, a real clear uh, interpretation of what the guys that wrote this book uh, thought um, constituted a, a wildcat. But other than uh, it was a, 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 a perceived... Um, missing piece of a, a, a factory available cartridge or bore diameter or mm. whatever uh, a lot so like 224 them... valkyrie <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what a, a very common one way back a long time ago um was the surplus eight millimeter mausers that came over um to get eight mil brass eight eight mil j or js i think or no it was j brass um was awfully hard to get if you could get it at all so what they did uh was they take the, took those same barrels and they ran a 30-06 reamer in it essentially a, a bigger neck of course to to accommodate the eight mil bullet but um then they then it was a uh, an eight millimeter, yeah, eight millimeter out six. Mm -hmm. Very, very common, uh, especially back a long time ago when all those eight mil Mausers were coming over. Guys, tell me if this makes sense to you. I'm looking up the 510 Whisper here, and it says a 750 grain AMAX, 1,050 feet per second, 2,491 joules. That's the muzzle energy. I don't speak 2, jewels. Neither do I, but I want to make sure that mm. the 510 Whisper is a legal cartridge in this country before I waste any more brain time on it. Mm. But does 20, huh. does 2,500 jewels make sense to you? I mean, it's moving pretty slow, no. so like it, it doesn't, hey? Because like a 50 is like 18,000 jewels. Uh, maybe I don't know. I can't remember what the formula is, but are they are they given a muzzle velocity? Sorry if I missed that. Yeah, muzzle velocity one thousand fifty feet per second. Oh yeah, okay. And it says eighteen hundred thirty-seven hmm. foot pounds, or two thousand four hundred ninety-one joules. It's possible, I suppose. Like it's a, I can't remember the formula, but it's a function of obviously uh, velocity and and mass. So they would have they have a low energy because it's not a high velocity cartridge. <clears throat> yeah, I think if you have that bullet going sub fifteen hundred feet per second, you're probably not making the uh, the velocity requirements yeah. for that energy. Chances yeah, are it's so a subsonic round. Up, well, at a thousand feet per second, you I would expect it to be a subsonic round. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a fifty caliber round. <laughs> mm-hmm. But what do you need the round Spud to do? Man. Uh, I don't know. Hit a deer. <laughs> <laughs> something, something to that effect. Maybe a rabbit. <laughs> um, the problem comes up with this, and I mean, we can't outright say no. You're wrong. Uh, he says you'd be wasting your time because the rifle would be capable of ten thousand plus joules. Now, only if it... you can fill the case. Uh, uh, right. big enough to be able to push the bullet at, at a high enough velocity. Yeah. yeah. And if it'll because push it at that velocity, the but rifle it'll blow as up the chambered. Round. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. 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 F 458 SOCOM is king, Christian's saying. <laughs> with a, is, is that the one with the ridiculous rebated rim? Like the case is about like this diameter and the rim is about like that. That's the one that yeah, it's a five, was... five, I think it is the five five six rim. I think yeah, so, I yeah. think it yeah, I think yeah. it is. Or would it be a three oh eight uh, size rim? No, it's it's not 
uh, uh, two, uh, five, five, six. It's uh, 50 Action Express is the parent case. So it's a 50, 50 AE. It's kind of a neat round, though. I don't know. It kind of is. It's what, also what, the, what? the magazines that everybody was bringing into Canada a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, for that's right, too. unknown reasons. So what niche does it fit? Well, wasn't it designed for special forces or something like that? I believe it was designed after uh, oh, in Mogadishu there. Is that what the idea was? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, after Gothic Surfing, they were saying that we need something that will just put a guy into the ground now, not hit him a few times and watch him walk away and then fall over. Well, it Stop was, and power. It, it was, yeah, it was around that whole time when, when they were using, uh, uh, when uh, special forces were using like uh, MP5s and stuff and like nine millimeter wasn't cutting the mustard. And, and there was a bunch of other, like a, uh, there was a lot of experimentation going on, right? Like we're talking like nineties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Late nineties, I think. Yeah. But the U.S. has always had a history of that. They passed on the 9 mil and went right to 45 because we want stopping power. Yeah, 45 or 10 mil? Well, and then the FBI couldn't handle 40, so yeah. they went back to 9. But... <laughs> I remember that, yeah. 9, nine mil is actually the older cartridge. It hurts, it hurts my wrist. <laughs> So uh, I think, let's go back to our uh, wildcat definition. Are we adding anything to it, or have we figured anything out tonight, or are we just spinning our wheels here? <sighs> I think I, we I, got it pretty close to hashed out. It's a cartridge that makes two or more changes to an existing cartridge. And what was and, the other thing we said? And requires and not, a new reamer. Requires a new reamer and is not a sammy certified cartridge right and it's not a are we adding that it requires a new reamer because any any changes are going to require a new reamer that's kind of a foregone isn't 100 percent. Mm -hmm. so 100%. It, it's 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 a cartridge that is made by making a change one two or more changes to an existing cartridge and is not adopted for sammy specs should we get Sammy on the phone and tell him this is your new definition? We'll like take our royalty <laughs> check in plain brown envelope. Uh, I don't need a pr right. plain brown envelope. I just need gold bullion. Mm. <laughs> I think we just solved every internet debate that there ever was about wildcatting. See, now, Bending says that our definition is wrong because 6GT is Sammy spec, but it's still a wildcat. I think according to says what we who, figured tonight, 6GT was a wildcat it no longer is right. because it is now sammy spec same with 300 blackout mm -hmm. i think the new bergera even comes in 6gt like their comp yeah edition yeah. I think uh, right. in the mpa chassis i think it comes in 6gt okay. from the factory right. i think you're right yeah oh we <clears> have <throat> to add to the definition and it has to have fuck you factor <laughs> yes those are the best yeah. kinds of wildcats fucking ryan is on it thank mm -hmm. you ryan damn it. yeah <laughs> okay so that's the end of the so it's it's a it's a cartridge that it makes two or more changes to an existing cartridge uh and has not been adopted uh, uh by sammy specs and is also designed to say fuck you to an existing cartridge mm -hmm. to yeah. one yeah. or more existing cartridges solid or to fill solid. a niche or just because you can is also the two okay, don't do real this, Derek. Yeah, we're Derek. Just getting wordy now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Christian likes it. He says bending checkmate. also. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> there's no factory. Bending also says there's no factory rifles available in 6GT, so it's still a wildcat. Now objections and, and yeah, sure okay. he's going to be Go corrected. Ahead. But even if that mm -hmm. were the case, there are plenty of uh cartridges not offered in a factory rifle anymore right mm -hmm. maybe at one time so there uh, so yeah what kind of what are those cartridges then and by the way uh yeah. bergera premier competition <laughs> rifle is available six five creedmoor six mil creedmoor and six gt and that is a factory made rifle kaboom baby 
Woo! Woo! <laughs> Suck it! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and we could get one from Phil at Odell Engineering. You can. Just there tell him Phil oh, yeah. sent you. Mm -hmm. Walk right in. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Spud's a little late, uh, slower than we are, but he he also Googled it in Bergara, oh. the premier competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to kick mm, him while How does that down. crow taste? <laughs> uh, ben, you just lie there on the ground for a little that? while, and, and we'll just kick you in the ribs a little bit. How does that sound? <laughs> 100 hours of SHOT Show YouTube coverage finally paid off. <laughs> Just being assholes <laughs> about it. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, oh, so we're Get not your daily adding... daily dose of humility. <laughs> have we de determined then that we are not adding to the definition that there has to be a factory rifle chambered in the cartridge? I think what happens on the BS podcast stays on the BS podcast. <laughs> no, we're, we're, crea we're creating history right now. This is... Mm -hmm. Okay. This is going to be the world's definition mm -hmm. of a wildcat cartridge. We will be cited on a Wikipedia article right with a link. Oh my god! Referring to this podcast, w dude. Wikipedia is 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 user driven. We can change the wiki page. Mm -hmm. This is true. <laughs> wildcat cartridge wiki. Yeah, are we actually there do is... There is a Wikipedia. So, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. There might actually be a definition here. Uh, so it says a wildcat <laughs> cartridge, often shortened to wildcat, is a custom cartridge for which ammunition and or firearms are not mass produced. No, that's a bullshit. No, bullshit. These cartridges are often created in order to optimize a certain performance characteristic, such as power, size, or efficiency Improving. of an existing commercial cartridge, or may merely be intended as novelty items. That's the worst definition in the world. Our definition yeah, that's is trash. much better. So how do you change this? I'm going to create an account. <laughs> I don't know. So... Username, be you guys want to you want to come on this on this journey with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Pounds. At a Wikipedia submission. Okay, hold on. You, uh, oh. <laughs> what? Oh, I have. Oh, you I gotta be to, signed in. I, have, mm -hmm. I, I gotta create an account. Yeah. So the probably gonna ask you to donate too. Is, is it gonna use? Okay, so it's not gonna show you guys what I'm creating for mm -hmm. the password here. Yeah. Um, how about uh, take a look at that uh, that captcha scram coach? They're like that. That's got to be the name of a uh, um, some sort of grunge band or something. I'm sure it's the name of a wildcat, like the 14 scram coach or something. <laughs> oh, that's actually a really good name. I feel like that'd be a 8. great like scram coach. Straight wall oh, cartridge yeah. name. <laughs> I think Spe it'd be better Spe Scram Roach. Speaking of that, like other factors that influence cartridge development. So I was looking a little bit. There's a lot of new straight wall cartridges, particularly due to some states' legislation. Um, like I, uh, Ohio, Indiana, they have hunting regulations for which require a essentially a straight wall cartridge with a minimum of like a 357 caliber. So that's where you're getting like 350 legend from is this kind of legislation. So unfortunately that's a factor government sometimes in cartridge development. Hmm. Now are some guys wildcatting to meet that requirement? It's a good question. Mm. Hmm. Or, or are you just going in grave robbing other cartridges and just bringing them back to the future? Like, I'm pretty sure the 400 Legend is just a 401 WSL <clears throat> that they mm -hmm. stuffed right. off a bit. <laughs> so can we make a definition for a Frankenstein cartridge? Something that's been reanimated <laughs> from the dead <laughs> and it has old parts and has new parts. Does it have to be a wildcat that's been brought back to life or... No, we're talking about like reviving like a dead cartridge, like a cartridge that's kind of obsolete, but then somebody oh, like dug a in the ground. Like rimfire or <laughs> like what are we talking about? <laughs> no, like like Mike's, Mike's uh, reference there. Like what if Mike was the cartridge you're referencing again? 400 Legend and 401 WSL, mm -hmm. which is from like 1910, I think. That sounds... Was that a rimmed? 
Yeah, I think so, hey? I think you... It was one of the very first semi-autos ever, I believe. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Are you getting anywhere, Chris? I am. I'm just shit-talking everybody because they said that my password is Tiny Pecky or mm. I made the password 1234567. So first of all, 1234567 is the kind of password that an idiot would have on his luggage. And second of all... <laughs> The password <laughs> is password, okay? <laughs> get, it, get it straight here. So here's what I've got so far. Uh, so I didn't take out the existing definition of wildcat cartridge. At the mm -hmm. end of what they wrote, I'm putting, in 2024, the Ballistically Speaking podcast corrected the definition of wildcat cartridge to <laughs> read as the following. Okay, yep. Oh, my God. Comma quotation mark a wild cat cartridge is any novel cartridge created from an existing cartridge <clears throat> which has been changed in at least two different ways, different ways, different respects. Let's say at different least different in two major dimensions. How about that? In at least two major dimensions, and such just... as... Uh, projectile diameter or shoulder, shoulder angle angle also for just our audio listeners uh chris is currently actually editing the wikipedia page <laughs> yeah for wildcat cartridge yeah and, and we were uh, you guys can see right i am sure yeah we can see yeah you're showing the screen so Okay, so, okay, help me how to finish this. A wildcat mm -hmm. cartridge is any novel cartridge created from an existing cartridge which has been changed in at least two major dimensions, such as projectile diameter or shoulder angle, mm -hmm. and has not been adopted by Sammy. By mm -hmm. S A M M or S A A M I. Uh, two A's. Two A's. Yep. One M. One I. <laughs> and has not been adopted by Sammy specifications. Mm -hmm. Now we just wait for the Canada People's History moment to come off. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and put in there... Um, Info at bspodcast.ca. Yeah, mm -hmm. so what I need to do here, yes. so, uh, so you see how you can have links to other things here? So that's what I need to figure out how to do. Yeah, add so, a citation. Uh, so the Ballistically Speaking Podcast, where's add a citation? It's right here, cite. Uh, okay, Content yeah, must be verifiable no, that, through that'll... citations to reliable sources. You can cite from books, newspapers, and websites. Yep, here we go. Right, articles and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I just want to make sure that I get. I mean, we're it's being proper. We are citing our sources, but nobody said the source can't be you. Yeah, well, of course. Mm -hmm. Literally every the journalist here does that, that now. Mm -hmm. Like, what'd you hear? it? Well, they wrote it in their article. Where'd they hear it from? Oh, but they wrote it in their article. Right. Did, did anyone actually look at it? It was no. developed in Rooster's <laughs> Man Cave. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> okay the rooster lab let's see if that works and now i need a link to sammy's uh website mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> you're managing the email from now on <laughs> insert this oh that's a citation not a link yeah, a citation is kind of a link. But it doesn't make the thing turn blue. I need an actual... Oh, here's that. what I need is the actual link. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I need to get rid of this citation then. Edit. <laughs> this is the dumb. How many? How many people? Have we lost? What is? <laughs> what is? How many people are just going to accept buddy? this as fact? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Better. You guys okay. see this? What? Banding ballistics. Six five Grendel and twenty five ACP are the master calibers. <laughs>, laughs in three hundred PRC. Mm. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We've linked the Ballistically Speaking podcast. Now, what, what? where's my link for Sammy? It's just S-A-A-M-I dot org. Mm. Right, yep. But I have to take the whole, I got to take the HTTPS and the whole shebang. Yeah, you got to take the whole, whole shebang there to be official. Yeah. Oh, right there. I can just redirect to their mm -hmm. web page. And they're going to be like, who are these people? <laughs> Wait, but, uh, so, uh, this is a They'll put us on a watch list. <laughs> Perfect. Are you really living if you're not on a watch list in 2024? Yeah, this is the best question. So, in 2024, the Ballistically Speaking podcast corrected the definition of wildcat cartridge to read as the following. <laughs> Quote, a wildcat cartridge is any novel cartridge created from an existing cartridge, which has been changed in at least two major dimensions, such as projectile diameter or shoulder angle, and has not been adopted by SAMI specifications. Change my mind. You I know think what? you I need an exclamation mark a behind stick in the mind. mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> projectile diameter doesn't necessarily come into chamber design though not in a major way fuck it <laughs> what is a minor edit? Hates a coward. yeah I, I would consider this a minor edit right mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. Just, yeah no real change there just, just basically <laughs> you essentially polished the article do you guys know what a, a 223 Sakshung cartridge is uh I don't know if you pronounce that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sakshung. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> my, oh, my edit has triggered a filter designed to warn editors against using Wikipedia as an advertising medium. Oh. <laughs> Dismiss. Uh, well, that's it. We need to make our own uh, online encyclopedia. I think it's time. Okay, let's let's go back here and let's remove our <laughs> link. Some poor kid in Arkansas is doing a story about industries they want to break it into and is going to cite this <laughs> in his great book project. <laughs> That sounds fantastic to me. Okay, there it allowed it because I took the link to our web page off. Mm. Oh. Okay. Okay, can somebody <laughs> independently look up Wildcat Cartridge Wikipedia and make sure that our changes have taken effect? <laughs> Bending is going to go in there and change it, he says, anyway. <laughs> it, it is there. Uh, it's it there. It's there. Going Fantastic. to uh, take a photo as confirmation as a memento. Yep. Screenshot it. I, I'm yeah. screenshotting it right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've done, we've done, we've changed the world, boys. I feel like we accomplished so much today. <laughs> mm, yeah. Where, where did we pick up our industry award? <laughs> That's a good question. Now, do we get a Pulitzer, like a Nobel? Like, what are we looking at here? Now, yeah. What's here? The... Here's what I would like to that say. That is awesome. Mm hmm. I, f I fully expect that uh, this screenshot mm -hmm. will make its rounds on the CCFR and NFA and Gun Owners of Canada pages before tomorrow. <laughs> and, and, and people will be arguing about it. Yeah, mm. and it, it will be our wonderful listeners that have made that possible. Because <laughs> without them, we're just four people That's on cool. the internet. <laughs> exactly exactly i'm saving it also 
I'm making this the background on my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> what an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think we lost most of our uh, our listeners <laughs> on this, so I'm gonna just gonna close that down. <laughs> Uh, so Ryan also confirmed that it was changed. Mm. I get 50 push-ups as a prize. <laughs> oh, what is gun con? Bending's asking I if we're know. going to gun con. Is he paying for flights? I what is it? Is he bringing moonshine? Is is, is that, that the John Patton thing? Is it what? John Patton like uh, TGC News. Gun news you can use. Yeah, I think he has his own show. I think, like, oh, you know, with brown L's and stuff. It's First thing like that came to mind tactical. for me was like Burning Man, but with firearms. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is Tacticon, but in America? I think he's trying Isn't to say oh, he means Tacom. Okay, but in America, I thought it was one of the Transformers robots in disguise. <laughs> that's Grimlock. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Gun is. Uh, that's okay. the uh, one I'm thinking of. Do we have anything more to uh, discuss here tonight, or have we solved the world's problems? We solved a problem. Mm. Or created one. <laughs> I think we've done enough. Yeah. You think we've done enough? Well, if, if that's the case, then uh, this is the time of the show where we mention that uh, if you'd like to check us out, you can check us out on Wikipedia under the uh, Wildcat cartridge entry on wikipedia also mm. on facebook.com forward slash bs podcast and on our website bspodcast.ca and on youtube uh, at bs underscore podcast uh if you'd like to email us you can email us at info at bspodcast.ca make sure you like and share our pages the algorithms don't like us we're such poor little niche canadians and we rely on you to share our content which means hey if you like a particular episode share it on your facebook page share it around to your friends link it like it subscribe it do all those things and as you always a massive thank you to all of our listeners who are going to share our wikipedia uh, entry and to mm -hmm. all of our sponsors uh without you guys we wouldn't have a show in the first place we're talking about shane and steve miles carrie and cappy duncan and rob phil doug and niza vanya and carly oscar and jr thank you all an immeasurable amount and until next time sayonara Yep. That's Because I have a shotgun and rifle that I use for and 22 gauge that I use for ptarmigan, moose, and black bear. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. You're listening to your weekly dose of BS. Ballistically speaking. The Ballistically Speaking Podcast.